Hey, welcome. My name is Adam, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the coolest teachings that I've discovered within the last year. This is an amazing, amazing teaching that Buddhists teach to new students and even advanced students that helps them to understand the nature of reality so that they can be happy. It helps them to jump off the wheel of suffering that is caused by always chasing after desire, chasing after pleasure and shielding yourself from pain. This is called the wheel of suffering, the wheel of, of samsara. This is what you're living on right now. This is what all beings are basically stuck on. This teaching helps to shine some light about what is really happening here in reality so that you can take your spirituality more seriously and achieve enlightenment or Buddhahood, which is liberation from the wheel of suffering. You can be happy in your life. You cannot be so attached to getting the things you want and being afraid of not getting the things you want, but you can just be free, you can be present in the moment, be authentic and just enjoy life as it is now. So the six realms is the teaching we're going to be talking about today. It is a very, very deep and intricate teaching that could probably be talked about for 20 hours. And honestly, I'm not a master of this teaching. I'm not trained in Buddhist philosophy. I've just studied it a lot on my own time. I've received talks about the six realms. Recently, actually last month, I went on an awesome meditation retreat at the Dharma Center of Canada, where there was a Tibetan monk who is a, basically like a reincarnation of a saint. He's a Rinpoche, which kind of means like saint in Buddhist. So very, very cool guy, um, very kind, very down to earth. And he's he was born in... I believe, um, not Tibet, I forget the name of, of, of the country right now, but uh, it's not Tibet, but it's near Tibet, it's not Nepal, anyways, yeah, uh, he, he was raised as a, as a monk, uh, and uh, he's, I think, very enlightened, super cool guy, and he gave me teachings on the six realms, and it was just, it just blew my mind, but how amazing, how profound this teaching is, so, I wanted to provide some context. So what are the six realms? So the six realms is a description of the different levels of consciousness that a human being or that any being can be incarnated into and live as and live through. So it's the hell realm, the hungry ghost realm, the animal realm, the human realm, the demigod realm or the jealous god realm and then at the top is the god realm so the context that i want to provide is understanding that this is not an analogy okay the six realms can be taken on as an analogy and it can be taught as an analogy but i think that these realms literally exist and this is something that I've been studying very, very, very deeply for the last year or so. There are descriptions of levels of hell and levels of heaven in all religions, in all cultures, in, on every single continent on earth. So, for example, in Norse mythology, they have this, these different realms. They have the god realm Asgard. And then they have um, Alfheim, uh, which is like the, the jealous god realm. And then they have Midgard, which is like the human realm. They have Jotunheim, which is the giant realm. Helheim and Musfelheim, which is like the hungry ghost realm. So they have, it's literally the same. They also have this concept in Jainism, where they have many different hells and heavens. They also have this concept in Hinduism as well. They also have this concept in... Christianity as well, in Dante's Inferno, for example, they have the seven hells and the seven heavens. 
So they have this in Polynesian cultures. They had this in they have this in shamanism as well. The lower realms, the mid realms, and then the higher realms. They have this in African religions. They have this in Polynesian religions as well. So they have this in Judaism. They have this in Islam. So this is not just an analogy that like is just made up and it's like kind of cute and. This is actually a description of the actual nature of the manifestation of consciousness of reality. Understanding that consciousness is all one and God is an infinite mind. It's an infinite shapeshifter that is able to manifest itself on a vast spectrum of different levels of consciousness that we're calling different realms. So if you want more descriptions about this, I'm going to talk about it in more videos, but there are great, great, amazing books that document all of these different religions and their, their levels of heaven and hell called Levels of Energy by Frederick Dodson and then also Journeys Through Spectral Consciousness by Frederick Dodson, Realms of Consciousness and Levels of Heaven and Hell. There's also great teachings about the six realms in Chogyam Trungpa's book called Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism. That's one of my top five books of all time. And Levels of Energy is also one of my top five books of all time. So buy those two books, read them, they'll change your life. All right. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, we understand that the levels of heaven and hell is not a cute analogy, but it is, it is an actual thing that actually exists. In fact, I asked this enlightened monk that uh, was giving the talks on the six realms, um, and he's a, he's a really cool guy. I asked him, I said, so the hell realm, the hungry ghost realm, are these realms that like actually exist? Or is this just like kind of an analogy? And without even like taking a breath, he's like, yes. And I was like, what? He's like, yes, uh, the hell realms actually exist. It's a place you can go. And there's many stories of the, the Buddha actually visiting hell realms and giving talks in the hell realms. And he said, the, this monk, he said to me that this is not the only human realm that exists. In Buddhism, there, there are billions of human realms. The universe is infinite. If you take on the understanding that the, the universe is infinite, which makes a lot of sense because where would the boundary be? <laughs> what would stop the universe from being infinite. There's no limit to reality. So the universe is infinite. I actually do talk about that in other videos. But once you understand the universe and infinite is infinite, there's no reason why there wouldn't be billions of human realms or billions of lower realms, disgusting, terrible hell realms. And there's no reason why God wouldn't take on these forms because God is an infinite shapeshifter that doesn't have a bias for what shape he takes. Excuse me. He doesn't have a bias. So he, God doesn't care that like, oh, hell realms are disgusting and ugly, so I'm not going to take that shape. God is, has no ego. He has no bias. God is infinity, infinite love. He loves all possible forms. So you know people who are really interested in horror movies, like my sister, for example, she just loves watching horror movies. Yeah, that is the part of God that loves studying and researching low levels of consciousness because they're fascinating. How does it feel to exist as a, a decrepit evil being? <laughs> Sometimes we experience this in our lives and there's even lower, lower levels of demons and stuff. So let's start explaining the realms. So I'm going to give a general Buddhist ex explanation of it. Again, I'm not a master at this stuff. Um, so please forgive me for whatever mistakes I make. And um, yeah. So let's start with the hell realm. So the hell realm is described in Buddhism, but also I'm just going to give like a general description from other cultures that I've heard of and read as well. So the hell, the hell realms are described as realms of fire, of lakes of burning sulfur, and beings are constantly being tortured. 
They're being poked and stabbed constantly by demons. There's no rest in the hell realms. They're being poked, tortured. They're being boiled. Their skin is being peeled off. They're forced to commit rape and murder to other beings. They're, they're forced to torture other beings. It's very graphic. Hell beings can be stabbed with, with knives. They can be burned. They can be like just all imaginable forms of torture. Their hair can be ripped out. They can be, I don't know, they can do a belly slide down a, a cheese grater into a pool of <laughs> rubbing alcohol. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's just like constant pain, torture, suffering. These realms are described as very hot. It's this feeling of being trapped. Like I'm constantly fighting to escape. And the more I try to escape, the deeper I get trapped. Uh, the pain can even be so bad that you freeze and you're just frozen. And uh, this is the description of, of the frozen hells. So in many cultures they have the burning hells, but then they also have the frozen icy hells as well, where you're just trapped and you're stuck and it's cold. There's no love. There's no warmth. It's just cold, barren, frigid and um, there's, there's no love. It's just like, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's like a barren wasteland of, of suffering and desolate loneliness, isolation. So it's imp the reason why these des I describe these is because these are probably real realms. There's no reason why these wouldn't exist. And there's many, 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 many anecdotal accounts of shamans and stuff where they maybe take a psychedelic or do a ritual that transports them to this lower realm that actually exists. If you resonate on the frequency of it, you can actually be there. That's how you can travel through time or travel through space is by changing your state of consciousness. This is so deep. Like I love explaining this stuff because it's so like it's true and it, this is just how reality works. You can resonate the frequency of your consciousness on a different level where you can actually visit a different realm. Many, 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 many examples of this. This is not just like Adam's wishful thinking. You can study it yourself. So these realms are literal places and they're also states that a human can experience as well. So an example of being in a hell realm is like always fighting to escape your current situation. Anger is usually associated with the hell realm. So feeling so fucking angry, like you're trapped, like you can't rest, like there's constant noises around you. The people are bothering you all the time. Uh, one example of a hell realm for me was playing lots and lots and lots of League of Legends, which is like you're forced to commit atrocities to other people where League of Legends sometimes puts you in such a low state where all of a sudden you start arguing with the people on your team, calling them names, uh, swearing, angry, and you're trapped, right? So League of Legends has this thing where you're in the game, but you're trapped in the game. You can't leave and you're just forced to like suffer <laughs> and be tortured by, by uh, the other team. Maybe they're stronger than you and you're going to lose, but you're just trapped there for like 10, 15 minutes. That's a fantastic example of a, a hell realm being trapped in a League of Legends game. I, for, for those of you who've ever played that, um, it's just like you, you're just trapped in this like room and like you, you just, you're angry, you want to leave, but you can't leave because the, the game will ban you if, if, if you leave. So there's a punishment for leaving. So it's just like, it, it's a terrible thing. So the way to kind of escape the hell realm is to actually stop fighting. So stop playing the game. Just like accept your current situation. Accept it. Instead of always pushing against the walls that are trapping you, you can just kind of like accept the walls. And then you realize they're not as solid as you thought they were. They're kind of soft. And when you, you stop fighting against 
life, then it's like you you now are, there's more looseness and you can easily kind of escape the hell realm and move up into a, a different realm that's a little bit less torturous. <laughs> so the next higher realm is the hungry ghost realm. I, like I, I, It's hard for me to give tons of examples of each realm. So the hell realm, other examples might be like um, the mafia as well being part of the mafia, like this constant violence, like, you know, being forced to like murder someone or being forced to rape someone. These are things that actually happen in uh, different um, gangs you can be part of or um, like there's a great story called um, Dance with the Devil. It's a song by Immortal Technique. Check out that song where he describes being part of a gang and uh, being so lonely and being forced to like rape someone and then realizing that that person that he rapes is his own mother. It's very graphic, very um, very gross, but it's uh, it's part of reality. So yeah, those are some examples of the hell realms. Next, let's talk about the hungry ghost realm. So the hungry ghost realm is another realm I've spent a lot of time in, and it's this feeling of craving for the god realm, craving for pleasure. The god realm, I'll tell you later, it's just like infinite pleasures. So the hungry ghost realm is like after you've escaped the hell realm, you kind of have this, since you're not so busy just like fighting against the demons torturing you and you've just kind of accepted it, now you kind of have some space to, there's this like this vague memory of like, oh yeah, life could be pleasurable. Life could be beautiful. So then you have this strong craving for getting pleasure. So it's this, it's this constant like craving for food or like craving for sex, craving for drugs. There's a book by Gabor Mate called the, In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts where it's all about addiction. So being addicted, being stuck in cycles of craving, this is um, the hungry ghost realm. And this realm is described as beings with huge stomachs and tiny, tiny, tiny little mouths, like tiny mouths where they're, they're always hungry. They're always needing more, but they can't even eat it. Like they can't even get the thing they want because right when they get it, they realize it's unsatisfying. So this cycle of like chasing for pleasure and then realizing that it doesn't satisfy you. When you finally get it, it's a mirage. So like you're, you're in the desert, there's a beautiful oasis, and then, but when you finally get there, it, it's an illusion. Or the, the water that you thought was so clean is actually mud. Or this, this quality of like, there's this beautiful woman, and she's so sexy and, and temp tempting, and then when you finally go to have sex with her, like there's this scene in The Shining, where there's this beautiful woman, but then when he goes to kiss her, it turns out she's actually a dead body. And it, she's a disgusting demon. So it's this quality of like going for getting something pleasurable, but then when you finally get it, you realize it, it, it's not satisfying and it's not what you actually wanted. And then you go to the next thing and the next thing. So the suffering in the realm of the hungry ghosts is the constant need for something else to satisfy you. It's like this insatiable hunger. And it's just, it's terrible. You're, you're always clinging to get a better experience, but you can never get it. So again, the solution to get out of the, the realm of hungry ghosts is just to accept life as it is, to surrender, stop chasing, just be, be with what is. Then once you loosen up a little bit, then you move up into the animal realm. So the animal realm is described as the realm of stupidity and ignorance. The animal realm is like you want to stay safe and comfortable in your habits. So you know people who just do like the same thing every single day 
and they're very closed-minded they're very rigid they need things to be exactly the way they want to be and if you ever introduce them to a new perspective or you try to get them to sway from their daily routine they'll ignore you they'll, they'll close off to you this is the animal realm doing the same thing day in day out because you want to stay safe and comfortable in your habits so it's like in the hungry ghost realm you've gotten this this one pleasure and then in the animal realm it's like you just want to keep it and the way you keep it is just by never exploring never looking at new perspectives just like doing the same thing every day going to work watching tv when you get home and then going to sleep and just completely ignoring life like ignoring how your body feels ignoring anything that could disrupt your reality so animals are bent forward on all fours and they're usually looking down they're not like like imagine like a you know like a cow that's like bent forward looking down is just eating whatever you put in front of its face it's not being specific it's not choosing what it wants to eat it's just it's just so dumb and ignorant so the suffering of the animal realm is just like being so closed and always being afraid of like other things harming you right animals are not seen to be enlightened in Buddhism they're actually seen to live a life of suffering where they're constantly slaves to their impulses they fight each other they are all, they're they're at war with each other they they eat each other like it it's like it's not really a place you want to live in I know it might seem like animals are just you know in bliss all day but they uh, their minds are definitely suffering because they're kind of stuck in their in their animalistic ways they're stuck in their patterns their habits and they can't break out they don't want to break out it's not that they can't break out they don't want to break out they're, they're comfortable as they are okay I'm sure you know many human beings that are like that many human beings are actually just living in the animal realm they're, they're more animal than human not that we don't love them and we don't wish them to grow and expand but it's just the truth all right so after you're sick and tired of the animal realm you can loosen up a little bit and you can become more open and loose and then you move up into the human realm there's actually a school nearby there there's like kids playing and stuff so if uh, if you guys hear the noise just bear with me here the human realm is actually right over there with the, the school so the human realm is described as being more able to choose what you want so the human realm is actually a blessed realm in Buddhism because it's very fortunate to be born in the human realm because you have the opportunity to achieve enlightenment the other realms you can't achieve enlightenment because you're just so like in preoccupied and involved with in hell you're just fighting against the demons that are torturing you in hungry ghost you're just chasing after pleasure in the animal realm you're just kind of like stuck in your instincts but in the human realm you have discrimination you're able to choose what you want so when the animals are more loose and they're kind of more open to reality then they can realize like oh I don't have to eat the same food every single day I can choose what food tastes better so or I don't have to do the same job every single day I can choose the job that's more pleasurable so in the human realm is still a realm of suffering where we are in this constant desire of choosing things that are more passionate like choosing things that feel good and avoiding things that don't feel good so a great way to think of this is like a shopping mall you go to the shopping mall and you go to the clothes store and you're feeling all the different fabrics and you're choosing different colors like oh do I want a blue silk or do I want a red wool you're you're comparing you're comparing the different fabrics which one would be more pleasurable and then 
you, you pick the one you want, you buy it, you feel all good about yourself, you go show your friends and say, hey look, feel how nice my fabric is. So the human realm is, is the realm of discriminating passion, being able to choose the pleasurable things. Which vacation destination am I going to go to? Am I going to go to Punta Cana or am I going to go to the Bahamas? Or am I going to go to Fiji? Right? So you're just, you, you're doing this all day. You're choosing like, what song should I listen to? <laughs> what video game should I play? What YouTube video should I watch? So when you're stuck in the animal realm, you just turn on YouTube and you just watch whatever video is, is presented to you. But when you're, or, or you just turn on the TV and you just watch whatever's on TV. You don't choose, you don't even change the channel, nothing. But when you're in the human realm, you're able to kind of choose a little bit more of like, what would make me happier, right? So the human realm is still a realm of suffering because you're constantly chasing pleasure and avoiding pain and shielding yourself from the painful things so that you can get the pleasurable things. So the humans, sometimes they get this bright idea that maybe what if I could, I could get to the God realm where I could just create a life where like there's just pleasure all the time, any kind of pleasure that I want. I don't have to worry so much about discriminating like, oh, this is more pleasurable than this. I don't have to worry about all these painful experiences. I could just be in the God realm where there's no pain ever. And maybe you see videos of celebrities that live on tropical islands and they just are, they eat caviar every day and they have beautiful scents and, and music around them all the time. They have maids and whatever. So getting to this God realm of infinite bliss, you get this bright idea. So that actually moves you up a stage and up and down a relative here. It's not like one is better than the other. All these realms are equally suffering. <laughs> So one is not seen as better, except the human realm, which is seen as better because then you can achieve liberation in the human realm because you can discriminate. You can choose, like, should I meditate? <laughs> should I actually achieve enlightenment or should I just like continue chasing pleasures? So the human realm is seen as very fortunate to be born into. Also the God realm as well. So the jealous God realm is in between the human realm and the God realm. And this is like you're constantly working and striving to get to the God realm. So entrepreneurs, business people, people who are constantly working to be successful. This is a beautiful example of the jealous God realm where they're literally jealous of people who are in the God realm. They want to be in the God realm too but the only way they can see to get there is by working really hard to stockpile all of these resources so that you can create your own little God realm. So you can buy your house on the beach and you know, eat whatever food you want and listen to music all day and just swim in the water and just be blissful forever. Don't tell me you've never had that fantasy before where you can just never suffer ever again in your life. You could just be in the tropical, blissful vacation destination. That is the jealous God realm. So then you get this idea, okay, I'm actually going to work. I'm actually going to take action to actually get to the God realm. And then it's like this constant striving of like working harder, disciplining yourself, working your ass off 12 hours a day and, and competing with each other. So the, the jealous God realm is the realm of competition. So in my last video, uh, achieve your goals by having fun or by being in the fun frequency, I was actually, a lot of those teachings that I, I gave or that were given through me were actually really good for neutralizing this jealous God state of consciousness where I'm, I'm saying over and over again in that video, you don't have to strive to be successful. You don't have to suffer and grind and discipline in order to be successful. You don't have to outcompete the other gods. You don't have to cheat and backstab. You don't have to get more views on YouTube than your competitors. This kind of competition mindset 
Uh, this is the Jealous God realm. And there's many stories of the Jealous God realm, like in Greek mythology, for example, the gods are just constantly like backstabbing and cheating and conniving, and they, they all want to rule over the God realm. So that's the, the Jealous God realm. And uh, I've spent many hours, many years even, just in that state of striving towards self-actualization and getting up 5 a.m. and working. I'm going to work so hard that finally, when I finally get to my end destination, then I'll finally be happy. I've been there. So the problem with the Jealous God realm is that it's, it's actually constantly suffering. You're constantly anxious that someone else is going to outcompete you. You're anxious that you're not going to get to the God realm, that you're not working hard enough. That if I take a few hours off to like just chill out and like go for a walk, then like I'm going to like lose my opportunity to get to the God realm. So you're constantly on your own ass working hard and you're not allowing yourself to rest. You're always afraid of being outcompete, competed. So the, the jealous God realm is a realm of suffering, but eventually, eventually you may even work hard enough and, and get to a God realm. So now let's talk about the God realm. So the God realm is described as just like infinite pleasure. It's just beauty around every corner and you don't even have to work at all. Like you can just sit on your golden throne all day with cushions with beautiful emu feathers that they're stuffed with, Egyptian silk. And you just lie there all day. And the second you want some beautiful music, you just snap your, you don't even have to snap your fingers. You don't even have to lift your hand. You just like think about beautiful music and it's there. And it's playing for you. Or you, you think about a beautiful lover and instantly they're they're there and you don't even have to have sex with them you're just just thinking of them is the 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 pleasure so the jealous god realm is just like beautiful smells beautiful music everything's perfect there's no pain and this is actually one of the sufferings of the god realm is the shielding from anything that is gross disgusting painful so the jealous God realm is like the suffering of the, of the jealous God realm. The teacher told me that it actually happens a lot towards their death. So allegedly, as the, as the gods are dying, not the jealous gods, as the gods are dying, their lifetime is like millions of years. So it's not like a human life, only 80 years. The gods live for millions of years. But as they still die, so as they get to the end of their life, then their body starts to rot. They start to have this, this rotting smell to them. And their death process takes thousands of years. So it's like this long, drawn out, like slowly rotting away. And then what happens is the other gods... They don't like you rotting away because they're stuck in, you know, they like their, their pleasurable realm of beauty. So you growing old and, and rotting, they don't like that. So what they do actually is they hide you away. They exile you. So you don't want them to find out that you're dying. So you, you put on perfume so that they don't smell your rotting flesh. You put on clothes to, to, to hide. You don't want to look old and wrinkly, so you have to put on makeup all the time and you have to hide from your friends because if they find out that you're secretly gross and you're dying, then they, they hate that. They don't like images of death and sickness and old age. That's the last thing they want. So if they find out that you're that, they'll, they'll hide you away. They'll exile you and then you just sit there for thousands of years apart from your, your loved ones, apart from the other gods, and you're exiled, and they don't accept you because you're dying, and you just die alone. 
So it's a, it's a very, uh, it, the God realm, there's also lots of suffering. Also, the problem with the God realm is that since life is so pleasurable and easy, there's no striving to meditate. There's no work to grow and to liberate yourself from the wheel of suffering. You think life is all good. So the gods are also very proud. They think they're better than everyone else. And the second something bad happens, that the problem with being in the god realm is that you're very fragile. So the second something happens that is a little bit uncomfortable, maybe the hot water turns off and now you have to sit in a cold bath. This is like they're not able to handle suffering. Like they can't handle pain. So it's like that'll ruin your life. Like if there's no hot water for an hour or the Wi-Fi turns off. Imagine like a spoiled kid having a temper tantrum because they've been given everything they want in their life and they haven't learned how to deal with suffering, with not getting what you want all the time. They're not strong. So the gods are very weak. So what'll happen is if let's say the Wi-Fi turns off, they'll plunge down into the jealous God realm trying to get, where's the Wi-Fi? What if I work really hard me to get the Wi-Fi back? Right? And then you're calling people to get the Wi-Fi back and then you plunge down again into the human realm of like, which people, you know, like, and then you plunge down again to the animal realm and then you plunge down and then you can actually end up in, in the hell realm very quickly. And so the, the God realm, it's almost like the, the greater you are, the harder you fall. So there is suffering in the God realm. There's even higher God realms known as the formless God realm where it's not even form anymore that's pleasurable. It's like you don't even need that music or that perfume or that sex or whatever to, to be happy. Now, it, now it's like you're just basking in formless awareness. This is interesting. This, I've, I've been in this as well where it's just like you're just like you're just in this like formless like state of like oh I'm the self. I'm enlightenment. I'm I don't even need forms to be happy. I'm just like happy because I'm so enlightened. Wait a second, who's enlightened? I the separate ego. So the thing that drives all of these six realms is the ego needing something else to relate to in order to secure its existence. But the ego doesn't really exist. There is no such thing as you. You're not real. So what you do is you, you fabricate all of these illusory realms, the hell realm, the hungry ghost realm, and then when you're in them, you, you, they feel solid and real so that you can kind of preoccupy yourself and distract yourself so that you don't just sit and sit in emptiness and realize that there actually is no ego. The way the ego secures itself in the hell realm is by always fighting against something. In the hungry ghost realm, by always chasing something. In the animal realm, by just like, by just being attached to what is in front of you. Just having your head down and working and working and working. Like, uh, so even in the God realm, you, you say, I'm in the God realm. Ah, I love my pleasure. My life is so amazing. My, even in the formless God realm, it's like, ah, I'm so enlightened. I don't even need forms to make me happy because I'm so enlightened. So these are just like ways to keep the ego going. So now that we have a pretty good understanding of the six realms, again, this was just an introductory lesson. Um, I may have even explained some of the things wrong, but I've tried my best. So how do we get off this wheel of suffering? 
So this is actually the reason why the Buddhists teach the six realms in the first place is to kind of give your mind something to like understand so that you actually have more motivation to do your meditation practice and to actually sit and to get off the wheel entirely. All of these realms are driven by one thing, ignorance. Ignorance, ignoring reality, ignoring the truth, ignoring being, ignoring the way life is now, which is the fact that you don't actually exist. There is no ego. There is no, nothing solid you have to protect. That's all you do all day. That's why you spend so much time in all six of these realms is because you're trying to protect your ego. You're trying to get something else. So desire and, and protection. So ignorance leads to desire, wanting something better than what's present here. And then avoidance is kind of the same as desire, like avoiding what's present because you know, it's not pleasurable and going for something that's in your mind, in your concepts. So one way you can escape these realms and become a Buddha, become an enlightened one, is to stop relating to life in your mind. <laughs> stop being attached to your concepts of life and getting something better in the future and avoiding the pain that's present, but actually to sit in meditation Meditation is the answer. And learning how to relate yourself with being. Learning equanimity. Surrender. Pure, just bare awareness. Accepting whatever comes. Getting rid of the desire to strive. So when we, the way to get rid of ignorance is by doing the opposite of ignoring the present moment, but paying attention to the present moment, developing this kind of panoramic awareness, which is just like, like you're fully present, you're accepting what is, you're not ignoring what is, you're not fighting against what is, you're being with what is by practicing meditation. There is a meditation that I've been doing recently called the Chenrezy meditation that helps to purify all six realms and helps to just establish you in this enlightened state. The, the state of pure emptiness where everything is seen to be radiant light. And there, is, there are no six realms. There is no meditation. There is no Buddha. There is no Buddhism. There's just the, the natural radiant emptiness of being. There is no more desire to achieve goals in the future or to escape the hell that I'm currently in. There's just... They call it Buddha mind. It's just the knowing of what is. So the Chen Chenrezy meditation I've been working with has been helping me with that. I was thinking of guide doing like a live guiding through it. It's, it's a little bit complicated. It's a little bit long. It takes like an hour. It's a little bit intricate. But if you'd be interested in coming through the Chen Chenrezy meditation with me, then come join the Conscious Creator community because I'm, I think I'm going to do a live guided Chenrezy meditation where it's, it's very beautiful. It, we visualize a deity and not because we're religious quacks, but because the deity is a projection of our own consciousness. So we visualize the deity, we 
become one with the deity. The deity purifies us. And then we, together, we purify all six realms. And we wish all beings and that are living in all six of these realms, we wish all of them happiness and freedom from suffering. We wish all of them to be established in Buddha nature. And by wishing this upon all beings, we actually create it for ourselves as well. So if that's something you'd be interested in being a part of, come join the Conscious Creator community where you can actually come talk to me live every single week and ask me questions about spirituality, about being happy now, attaining Buddhahood. Now this is something like I haven't done for myself, but I'm trying, like, I, I don't know, like, I, I, I get glimpses of it sometimes. You know, I meditate every day. I do my practice. I do my best to embody the teachings. I'm not perfect. I still have a lot more purification work to do on myself. However, I, I do have a lot of experience and I can help people who are just like, who need help. So if you like my teachings, if this has been helping you, then I have already been chilling in that conscious creator community come join it's completely free and uh, it'll help you to achieve lasting peace and happiness in your life and also to just like enjoy your life <laughs> that's it be happy so that's it subscribe to the channel i'll see you in the next video